Welcome to US Digi 360. I'm Ginger Chang. Today, we revisit America's dental care system. The United States is considered a wealthy nation, but sadly, 100 million people don't have access to medical services simply because they can't afford it. The homeless is often among this group of vulnerable members in society. To tell us more about his own experiences assisting the poor and underprivileged in rural parts of Taiwan, we have Dr. Jian So Xin, the hospital director of Daling Tsuji Hospital in Taiwan, and also his own talk show, All About Health. Welcome, Dr. Jian. Mm -hmm. So first off, tell me why did you become a doctor? We have a TV series from America uh, that is told something about the doctor, not only just uh, operating or prescribe prescriptions for the patient, but they, they also reach out for some rural area, for some poor people. So that gave me a strong impression about what can be done by doing a doctor. Then how about, tell me the first time when you actually went out into the rural parts to help the underprivileged people. Yeah, when I have the chance to go to Hualien, that is a very, very rural area. When I see that, I think that there's something we can do. Mm -hmm. And at that time, Master Zheng Yan established mm -hmm. 300 bed hospital. And the next segment, the first segment actually, the homeless people that our Tijiza uh, Dental Mobile mm -hmm. Outreach is doing is helping them feel, you know, helping them get access to the medical services that they don't mm -hmm. have. Let's go take a look. We see more and more um, homeless population in St. Gabriel Valley. Some of them are Asian. say about 10. I've run into 10 veterans that have had uh, problems with acquiring jobs. Uh, being a Native American, Chiricahua Apache, people don't smile at me. They look at me very, very scared, I guess. Or... We are over 1,000 unduplicated men and women that have stayed in our shelter. Not only individual, more, more and more family members. But I have one daughter that already started cattle speed LA, so she's beautiful. Uh, I didn't want my kid behind the street, so I spent more time I had needed. I didn't ever want him out here. She's 30, he's 26, and the youngest is 16 now. You constantly have the picture with you all the time? Of course. I know what it's like to be uh, uh, homeless and, and live on the street and... Well, the first time I, I got into this, I was very disappointed that I had to do that. Uh, but I was kind of like hungry and this, you know, everything was messed up. I lost my job. Things will be better. You know, you just have to do the right thing. All right. Perfect. Now I can cook something tonight. Take that home. I didn't, I thought I, I would never do this. I thought I would never do this. Ouch, 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 ouch. These are a dime a piece. It's good stuff. This is not something you want to do. It's dirty and you can get diseases, you can get bugs. This is not something that I would want anybody to do. Four dollars and ninety cents. My sixteen year old son. And he's 
I just happened to catch him. I thought he got off late later on, but I don't know what time it is. <laughs> I'll put it in your bag. Yeah, put, ask him for the bag. So how was your day in school? What'd you cool, I guess. Fine. You got homework? Yeah. A lot? Not too much. You gonna be okay? You gonna make it through school? I'm gonna try. Is there some stuff that I can get you for your face? Eat all junk food, though. I know. Look at what I give you. <laughs> I get you, hot <laughs> dogs. <laughs> this is the part that kills me because I'm not taking care of him, like I took care of his brothers and sisters. We try to stay happy for what we have. Like whatever we got, we'll stay happy. You know. You know, I'm constantly fighting with that frustration. You know, he deserves more. It kind of not just hurts him. It hurts me, and like it puts me in the situation I've been in. Like. Pretty much like I've been living in a motel, started from a motel into like, almost like on the streets. You know, you're, you're, I'm 55 and I'm back where I started from. <sighs> very, very frustrating. Like at my age, life is not easy and it's not gonna get any easier from my age and most people don't know that at my age. But, you know what? There's one good bright side. My son says he loves me no matter what. And that's what keeps me afloat. That's what makes me, you know, fight on. He's my father and I love him so much, you know, no matter what. He's like my fiance. Uh, we're hoping to get married someday. He never did. He's a romantic at heart. He's kind of silly and corny about it sometimes, but he's he's a real romantic at heart. We've had our ups and our downs, and we've had our ins and our outs. And I've been with him during the worst times. So if we've been together this long, I know we can make it when things are going good. I've been homeless for the last, uh, uh, I would say, like 12 years. About, about 15 years ago, I was uh, I would, became homeless. Couldn't get a job. Chase Bank basically uh, stole my house from me. My anxiety levels were like through the roof. Being having terminal cancer and um, uh, bone marrow cancer, um, I'm 52 year old man. And I ran away from home. <clears throat> Like, men are not supposed to cry, but it's just hard to leave my kids and my mom and my wife, but I'm getting better. Coming here right away, I'm, uh, you guys have turned me around 100%. Our dentist, they, um, after their daily works, so they arrived to their homeless shelter around 6 p.m and started to see more than 20 to 30 patients until 11 p.m. They're lucky enough to have something to eat. They don't even worry about cavities. Do you, do you like brush your teeth every day? And... No, not every day. That's the bad part. Because I didn't take care of them, I, I didn't brush them. Well, I didn't know how to brush my teeth. They eat nothing but junk food. It's not healthy nor balanced, and they don't get much fiber. Uh, me no morning. Yeah, no nothing. Five dollars maybe, uh, jack in the box. Yeah, but no five dollars, no nothing. <laughs> My biggest addiction is food. <laughs> I like to eat it as well as cook it, but I can't eat half the stuff I wish I could. Corn, corn on the cob, <laughs> and I can't. And I can't eat it. Sometimes uh, I put them in a blender and I blend it. So. <laughs> I remember when my son was in high school, they did a lab project. They immersed the entire set of teeth inside Coke or any brand of cola. About two weeks later, they opened the soda container and picked up the teeth to weigh it. After four months, they weighed it again.
The entire set of teeth had already been worn away within three months. It indicated that some chemicals in the soda erode away your teeth. We called it chemical erosion. My first soda is uh, Coke. You like it or oh, yeah? Ooh, Coke? Coca Cola? Yeah. And iced tea. Yeah, that one. <laughs> because I've been wanting to drink a cold soda, but I haven't because the pain in my tooth. If it's soda, especially soda, where I rarely drink, but if I do, I would rinse with water. Every day, we should use dental floss before bedtime and then brush our teeth. That way, we can keep a beautiful set of teeth to use and for everyone to see for your whole life. According to the Institute of Medicine, oral health is linked to overall health. Furthermore, despite the social determinants of disparities in health, gum disease and cavities are preventable with proper public health dental education. Dr. Jen, as a doctor, what do you usually tell your pa uh, patients to stay healthy? If you eat a lot of junk food, mm -hmm. the artery will become atherosclerotic. But if you just told him that the gundal impression, you can show him the picture, show the patient about the picture or show them even video or some animation films, mm -hmm. then he will keep that in his mind. Mm -hmm. And that will help. In our next segment, as we go see the care recipients, one of the criteria is in order for city to help them, they must actually agree to turn things around and make their lives better. Let's go take a look. You want to take a this side first? Yeah. Okay. And no then, problem. I was thinking maybe get them all pulled, help me with some kind of way to pay, be able to afford to have dentures. Over half of the root was damaged. The nurse had caused so much pain, they had to take painkillers every time it hurt. And so that's what I decided to have them all pulled. So I take out one, two, three, four. Okay. Okay. He cried as soon as he came onto the mobile dental unit. He told me that he couldn't eat, so he had to eat soft food. One, two, three, four, five. We are not only provide the dental services, we empower them. We provide the bamboo banks. We provide the jinxi aphorism. We encourage them to be a volunteers. I've been volunteering at the shelter off and on for like about 15 years. I'm in charge of cots. I give out cots every night, break down tables and chairs. And uh, ever since then, I, off and on, I've been coming here volunteering, helping out. I just give back because I like what the program represents, you know. People that are down on their luck, you know, it's, it's a very good program. And so, and that's why I like to volunteer. You show up, you're here to give back, to help out. If they decide to give you something for being there, great. If they decide to help you out with whatever stuff you might need. We've hired them as staff, and they've done very, very well. And they've been able to move on from there because now they've got something on the resume saying, well, I worked at the winter shelter. A lot of them want to, to work with the homeless because they feel they could contribute. They've been there, they know what the problems and the pitfalls are. Yeah, we, we, we all watch each other's backs and take care of each other. You know, this is like a family, a brother or sister, you know. It's hard, but I learned a lesson, believe me. I learned a lesson. If you don't take good care of your teeth, either you can't go out or show your smile. And when you do smile, you'll cover your mouth with your hands. With reassurance that, you know, that, that my appearance looks healthy and I, and, I, and I look good. You have a confidence when you walk in to apply for a job. But yeah, it, it would help with a job. I mean, it helped with a lot of things. If everybody had a blindfold on first and they said, hello, how are you? And you spoke to them and they felt something, you know, they felt before they saw.
but that's not the way it is. And I think the importance of, of a smile will set your whole day. And I like that with you guys are very, just walking in that door, it just was, you know, you guys really, like I said, pulled me, pulled me back. And I'm very grateful for that. Okay. Right on. I'll, I'll do my best, Far okay? All right. But you have to thank Dr. Chen. Uh, Dr. Chen, oh, Chen. of course. Thank you. Yesterday is because I fui a limpiarme los dientes y vi es clean, es very, very good. Uh, fui a que me cortaran el pelo y para mí me siento pues, una persona más mejor uh, que cuando tenía mi pelo un poquito más grande. Y ahora me siento un poquito más joven. Tengo 33 años, pero ahora me siento de 15 años. That, I, that could change my life, it could change my surroundings and, and how I feel about myself and how others see me because I get criticized by people because of my, my, my teeth. I told my son all the time, I go, hey, don't screw up your teeth. Look what I just did. I had all mine pulled. Well, the, the, the teeth that you guys gave me, uh, you guys did a really excellent job. The, the teeth I had before, they broke, so uh, you guys came and I had them fixed. Me is happy, 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 happy. Uh, today me is working. Uh, me is tired, but me is happy. Uh, me is working and, and let's keep it. Uh, my friend, this is contact to, hey, maybe working for me. They said, yes, what time? They said, six morning. They go, okay, six morning. <laughs> me is happy, 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 happy. Yeah, me is tired, but happy. <laughs> yes? <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. What's happening is they're getting ready to uh, put, make a mold for my new dentures. <laughs> you want to see? It looks like a monster's butt. Extractions are free. Examinations are free. They only paid the lab's fee, so they saved almost $5,000. Is that a portrait? I mean, they somebody painted that, correct? Right? This not a, and then uh, take care of my youngest son, and then uh, go on with life. You know, uh, there's a lot of things that I want to see, a lot of places I want to go, and they aren't going to happen being homeless. I mean, he's really crazy. Yeah, but he's cool. He, he's a good person. Good heart. Do you love him? To death. To dad, that's my baby. He's a good guy. Our dentist would justify and reach our agreement with them and ask them, if you can help yourself to stand up, we will help you to provide a denture. You will have a chance to go back to the normal life. This is a two pennies that you get when you shop every day. It's to help the people that don't have food, dental, and medical. So here we go. So it's not just the, the dental, it's not just the haircuts and the blankets. It's, I think, the willingness to help in those areas that they know uh, there's a need for. And I think that's the important thing. Why aren't there more civic organizations, not just churches or different religious organizations, but big, co big corporations. So there is not a willingness to involve themselves the way the Tushi Foundation does. To give them the opportunity to empower them to stand up. That is the partnership between Suji and the homeless population, the homeless residents, and our friends. And I think that once I got my teeth and I'm ha and I, they sense that I'm happy and that I, I'll kick butt and I'll, I'll, win the, I'll win that battle, the battle over homelessness. Welcome back. So keeping in mind with the importance of learning from doing, mm -hmm. Dr. Chen, can you tell us maybe someone that you've helped in the past who's turned around to give back to the community. Yes, I recall a young lady, a college student. Uh, she had a, a tumor, a cancer mm -hmm. over her chin. Mm -hmm. So we have to remove the chin of that lady. Afterwards, she had to receive chemotherapy. Oh. 
But when she went through this stage of uh, treatment, she wanted to, to become a volunteer. Wow. Because during that hospitalization, she sees a lot of patients willing their fight mm -hmm. to against the illness. Mm -hmm. She wants to make the others know that that can make a difference. If you have the will, the strength to against the illness. Well, Dr. Jen, thank you very much for coming on to the show. It was a great honor. Thank you. The, the honor is also mine. Thank, <laughs> thank you. you. In our next segment, Footprints, we introduce you to Dr. Kenneth Liao, who is the Deputy Director of Tsuji International Medical Association of the New York Chapter. Let's go see how he manages to always allot time to provide his dental expertise in Tsuji's medical missions. I was born and raised in a small village in uh, Malaysia. Subsequently, after I graduated from dental school in Taiwan, I came to the States for postgraduate study in uh, Connecticut. Uh, 1998, uh, that was the first time I officially joined uh, Siji after my sister got was involved a few years before that. 1999, uh, there was a big hurricane, Hurricane Mish in Honduras. Uh, that was one of the largest hurricane in the Caribbean. So we have, a, at that time, a really big uh, team at Siji International Medical Association mission. We did a lot of, uh, not just the dental, medical, but we did a lot of humanitarian, of course, also we went to home visitation. And there was no water supply, and we see kids running around naked, barefooted. And of course, we did dental mission right on the hilltop under the sun. Being a very busy person, uh, professional, I have two private offices uh, and getting involved in teaching. I'm an associate professor at NYU. So I try to do as much possible during the week, even if I'm busy or after the blood drive in Siji or after the uh, teaching at NYU. And I think in, in, in New York, in America, to get into the mainstream and as Master said, you got to help the local, think global but act local. I think that the future of Siji actually rests on all of us to get involved in volunteerism and actually care about people by doing volunteerism. You must be wondering how Dr. Liao is able to manage his busy schedule without having some downtime. Well, his secret to staying fit and happy is biking. Join me next week to find out more.